You ever done that thing where you love your cell phone? You sort of take care of your cell phone. You love that it takes pictures of your loved ones. You love that it gets you on the interwebs. You love that it makes phone calls. You love your cell phone until a new number comes out and someone walks into the office with the new iPhone, whatever it is. And now as you look at that phone, you love that phone. And you look back at your phone and you go, I don't love you anymore. <laughs> you know, somehow your pictures look a little more ugly, you know. Or the phone calls just don't seem as clear. It is jealousy rearing its ugly head. Let me ask you, have you ever wished you had someone else's job? Someone else's talent? Someone else's car? You ever been envious about someone else's boat, motorcycle, someone's body? Wishing maybe you were more in shape, a little taller, maybe had a little different hairline. I'll tell you, sometimes I, th I thought I was supposed to have a forehead. I have more of a five head now, I gotta be honest. It's like retreating back. You ever been jealous of somebody's vacations, somebody's home, somebody's vacation home? You ever been jealous of someone's kids? Ooh. Guys, we're talking about envy today, this monster within that, truth be told, it seems like something that maybe isn't that big a deal at first, but if we're not careful, can kind of worm its way into our heart, our soul, our mind, and if we're not careful, rob us of joy, destroy relationships, and do some things, do some damage that honestly is just not fun to talk about. Take your envy, your jealousy, and just take it into the presence of God. Talk to him about it. Pray about it. Be honest with him about it. And I'll tell you why. Because envy at its core is based on deception. It is based on lies. We are envious with people and we have lies that say things like, if only I had what they had, then I'd be happy. I'm jealous because they have this, this status, this thing, this whatever. And if I just had that, then all my problems would be over. I'd be fulfilled and happy and, and at peace and have joy. And that's just not true. Another lie that envy tells is, you know what? That person over there who has everything, their life is perfect. They don't deal with any of the problems that I deal with. And you know what? That's not true. Or we look at a person and we say, you know what? God just must love them more than me. I, they must have more faith than me. They, they must be more you know, just beloved of God than me. And that's just not true. Well, watch, watch how this plays out. Watch how this happens in David, King David's prayer journal in Psalm 73. He's struggling with envy. And just watch how this plays out. He says, I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They're free from common human burdens. They're not plagued by human ills. This is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Do you ever feel like that? Like, gosh, they've got, it. They've got everything. But it's just, it's not true. No one is free from common human burdens. Because everyone is a common human. There's a church in Michigan uh, next to my church. It's kind of in the same area when I was a pastor in Michigan. And they wanted to open up a new campus. And the pastor of that church called me up. And he said, hey, Dave, I uh, just want you to know that we got donated to us a building. Just an entire building donated. And this is a great opportunity for us. We're going to launch a second campus but out of respect for you, I want to give you a call because it's like a mile down the road from your campus. And because I am a pastor, I don't deal with any feelings of competition or any unrighteous motives at all. <laughs> Man, and I wish that were true. Because the truth is, as soon as he said that, I start tensing up. I start thinking, no, I'm threatened, I'm jealous. Why did anybody give me a building? I'm all frustrated. And I'm telling you, I w I w it took everything I had to will myself to say these words. I'm so happy for you. 
<laughs> and you're going to be needing to renovate that space and you're going to need equipment. So my church would like to contribute financially to what you're doing. And he couldn't believe what I said. <laughs> Trust me. No. <laughs> my heart was so bad. <laughs> my heart was so bad. Thank you, though. But he couldn't believe what I said. I couldn't believe I was saying it either. <laughs> but six months later, he started this campus and 700 people, 750 people showed up. And I sent him a text and I said, man, I heard what happened. Had 500 people showed up, I would have been happy for you. But at 750, I'm just jealous is what I said. And then he texted me so graciously and he said, hey, without your partnership, it couldn't have happened. Which is totally not true. But he was just being gracious. And you know, the truth is, is that I tried to be humble and serve him, and he tried to be humble and serve me. And do you know, today we're good friends, and we celebrate each other's wins. So I would love to tell you how celebrating others short circuits envy in your life. I'm not quite sure how, I just know that it does. I just know that when you celebrate God's goodness in other people, it somehow empowers you. It somehow uh, puts you on the same team with them. It somehow puts you on the same playing field as a receiver of God's blessings with other people. I don't know how. I just know that it works. And so I would encourage you to celebrate others. Blaise Pascal in the 1600s talks about this concept of our hearts having a vacuum, our hearts having a, a God-shaped Whole. It went on to be called a God-shaped whole concept and this idea that we're born with it. That there's something in our life that we feel is just missing. And we walk through life trying to, to fix it, trying to put something in that hole to fix it. Either the love of a, of a husband or, or a child or, or a certain amount of achievement or, or some sort of goodness or, or earning God's love and, and some sort of righteous uh, uh, piety. We try everything we can and yet we're exhausted because we have to try again and again and again because nothing fits in a God-shaped hole except for God. 